Let's go live to Pennsylvania, where police are releasing details about the capture of escaped killer Danilo Cavalcante. A law enforcement source confirms to NBC News that the fugitive has been captured. Let's listen in. Not only with his physical presence, but his work in Harrisburg on a daily basis. I'd like to thank the Border Patrol, Customs, the FBI, the Marshals, the ATF, our federal partners, the Chester County District Attorney, Deb Ryan, and her Chief County Detective, Dave Sassa, our municipal partners, too numerous to mention here in Chester, Montgomery, Delaware, and Bucks Counties. We could not have done this without, without everyone. Uh, I would like to thank, from the bottom of our hearts, the members of the Pomar Lynn Fire Company. I know the media has been in and out of here. Uh, the hospitality that they have shown us, the logistics that you need to bring to bear in an operation like this, we, we would have been hard-pressed to do that without them being good hosts to us. Lastly, uh, but certainly not least in any way, shape, or form, to the women and men of the Pennsylvania State Police, thank you. Thank you for your hard work and your diligence. Um, this is my third manhunt with Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens. It's not lost on me that it was nine years to the day yesterday for the uh, Blooming Grove ambush. And in all of those uh, operational cycles, there is no person uh, who enjoys more of my trust and confidence. Uh, he was tasked with standing this operation up. My confidence in him is marrow deep. Uh, he is the consummate professional, and I would now like to turn it over to Lieutenant Colonel Bivens to give you the operational rundown of the capture of Cavalcante. Lieutenant Colonel Bivens. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Colonel. It is uh, a true pleasure to stand here this morning and uh, talk to all of you about uh, bringing this manhunt to a successful conclusion and without getting anyone else hurt, most importantly. None of this would be possible without the support of this team, represented by uh, members of various agencies standing with us up here, by others standing throughout this fire hall, and by still more who are out there in the field. So let me give you a few details about how this unfolded. As you know, we have been uh, working most recently in a uh, perimeter established in northern Chester County. Last night, shortly after midnight, a series of events started to unfold. First, we, uh, we had a uh, burglar alarm at a residence near Prizer Road within the perimeter. Uh, our people investigated that. Did not, uh, did not find Cavalcante there or anyone else, but it brought, it started to bring some of our people into that area. Uh, we had been searching an area not far from there already with some tactical teams that night. There was uh, an aircraft overhead utilizing uh, FLIR technology, and uh, close to 1 a.m. picked up a heat signal that they began to track was west of PA 100 and north of Prizer Road. Tactical teams began to converge on that location where the heat source was moving. Uh, unfortunately, we had a weather system that also came in and we had lightning that was flashing all around and it caused the aircraft to have to depart the area. Tactical teams made a decision to uh, secure that area, that smaller area, as best they could and hold it through the storm and until uh, we could bring additional resources in and bring aircraft back overhead to ensure that we did not have uh, an issue with an escape. That resumed early this morning and shortly after 8 a.m., tactical teams converged on the area where the uh, heat source was. They were able to move in very quietly. They had the element of surprise. Cavalcante did not realize he was surrounded until that had occurred. That did not stop him from trying to escape. He began to crawl through thick underbrush, taking his rifle with him as he went. 
one of the Customs and Border Control teams, Bortac, uh, had a dog with them. They released the dog. Some of our PSP CERT members were also there, had him surrounded. The dog sub subdued him, and team members from both of those teams immediately moved in. He continued to resist, but was uh, forcibly taken into custody. No one was injured as a result of that. Excuse me. He did sustain uh, a minor bite wound. Uh, we had uh, medical uh, personnel at the scene, and they, uh, they took a look at that. Cavalcante was, as I said, taken into custody. He was transported to our Avondale station for further processing and interview, and he will ultimately be transferred to a state correctional institute where he will be housed and begin to serve his life sentence. In just a few minutes, I'll open this up to some questions, but I, uh, before I do that, I want to turn this over to one of our, our very close partners, District Attorney Deb Ryan. I know she would like to say a few words, and again, then we'll be happy to take your questions following that. Deb. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Bibbins. Today is a great day here in Chester County. Our nightmare is finally over, and the good guys won. We owe a debt of gratitude to all of the first responders for their tireless and dedicated efforts in bringing this fugitive to justice. They worked around the clock, and we are deeply grateful to all of them. Our community can finally regain its normalcy and breathe a collective sigh of relief. This would not have happened without the collaboration and efforts on behalf of a multitude of agencies. I need to thank the governor, Colonel Paris, Lieutenant Colonel Bivens for his unflappable and dedicated leadership, the U.S. Marshals, the Chester County Detectives, the FBI, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, the Department of Emergency Services, the Sheriff's Department, and every single person who went out into the field in the most horrendous conditions. We had weather problems, we had terrain problems, and a, and a ton of obstacles that prevented our capture from occurring as, ex, ex, as expediently as we wanted. We have the best people in the business, and we never lost faith that this capture would occur. We knew that it was just a matter of time. The scope of this manhunt was extremely impressive. The brave men and women who went, there, went out there every single day are our heroes, and I am proud to be a part of this collective team of, of people who worked around the clock to bring this man to justice during this monumental challenge. They utilized every piece of advanced technology, dogs, drones, helicopters, every asset available was put out for this capture. I can't express our gratitude deep enough to all of them and to the community for their support. We received dozens and dozens of donations, well wishes, and kind support from everyone in the community, and we thank this firehouse for housing us. We know we disrupted their lives for a while. One of the first calls we made upon learning about this capture was to the Brandau family, who, as you can imagine, had been living in a complete nightmare. They are so grateful to the men and women who helped with this capture. They can now finally sleep again. I can't thank law enforcement enough for their efforts. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, we will be happy to take your questions. Yes. With the uh, helicopter overboard, we saw the arrest taking place. There was some criticism about the photo op that was taken with the fugitive. Can you explain how that's actually a standard procedure, or what's the reasoning behind the photo op with the fugitive? Uh, you know, I'm aware that there was a photo op that was uh, taken out there. Those uh, men and women worked amazingly hard through some very trying circumstances. They're proud of their work. I'm not bothered at all by the fact that they uh, took a photograph with him in custody. Again, they're proud of their work. They kept the community safe. Uh, I say thanks to them and good job. Did sir, he, did he say, sir, did he say anything in the moment that he was captured and you released the name of the canine officer who bit him during his capture? Uh, we will probably not be releasing uh, the name. Uh, and in terms of anything that he said, uh, we, we need to use an interpreter, and he has been taken back to the station, and, and at that point, uh, we will attempt to interview him at the Avondale station. Did he say anything upon capture? 
Uh, I'm not aware of it. Uh, if he did, um, I, I don't have that information. Well, Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel, your officers were authorized to use lethal force if he didn't actively surrender. Was the goal to always take him in alive? That's always our first, uh, first choice and preference. Uh, again, that option is only to prevent the escape of a very dangerous individual. Had they not been able to contain him, that would have remained an option. Who made the arrest? Well, we've been uh, listening to some breaking news out of Pennsylvania where police are releasing details about the capture of an escaped killer who's been on the loose for the last two weeks, announcing that Danilo Cavalcante has been taken into custody. We're going to have a lot more on this uh, developing news story. Stay with us.